Hey everyone, I'm Richard and it's finally happening. On September the 7th, in a special PlayStation meeting hosted in New York, Sony is finally going to take the wraps off the PlayStation Neo. I'm expecting a full hardware reveal plus a big bunch of game showcases, hopefully with Sony's first party studios taking point. But the question is this, in the wake of Microsoft's Project Scorpio spec tease, will Sony beef up the Neo hardware? More to the point, is it actually viable for them to do so? Well, I'd say on balance it's probably unlikely, but Sony, well, it does have some form here. Yes, 8 gigs of GDDR5, the big surprise at the last big PlayStation meeting back in 2013. Now, I'd seen the PS4 spec about a month prior to that, and back then there was only 4 gigs of onboard memory mentioned, and this was in documentation supplied to developers working under NDA. And it wasn't just Sony that tweaked hardware specs prior to launch. Xbox One then, initially it was going to ship with a 1.6 gigahertz CPU cluster and an 800 megahertz GPU. By the time of launch, we were up to 1.75 gigahertz for the Jaguars and an 853 megahertz GPU core. Okay, so let's look at the Neo spec as it stands now and how it compares to the standard PS4. CPU wise, we're locked to the same octo core AMD cluster as seen in PS4, but the GPU is in a whole different league. 36 compute units versus 18. Three additional generations of AMD GCN efficiency enhancements and about 24% of additional memory bandwidth. We're looking at a 4.2 teraflop GPU, but can it cut the mustard against Project Scorpio? What we know about that is that it's using a 6 teraflop GPU and has a whopping great 320 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. Right, so there's a curious rumor circulating the NeoGAF forum suggesting that Sony actually has two Neo hardware designs. The one that we're aware of, which I should say is the only one that developers have actually been briefed on and another apparently more powerful box with a more powerful GPU and a faster CPU. Now that presents problems. When AMD carries out semi-custom design work for Sony, it isn't cheap. Going to the lengths of creating two different processors would cost millions in wasted R&D costs. And as much as I want all new hardware launches to be as powerful as they can possibly be, I just can't see it happening. But maybe, well, maybe Sony can actually get more performance from the existing Neo hardware. So take a look at this. It's the Global Wattman application used with AMD's Polaris products, the same core hardware used in PlayStation Neo. Now check out Power State 2 there, 910 megahertz. That's just one megahertz off the core clock of the Neo GPU. Now, the curve you're seeing here represents voltage versus frequency, and it actually has a sweet spot at power state 3. That's 1075 megahertz. Now, if Sony could push to that, we'd be looking at a 5 teraflop GPU. Theoretically, it is possible, but it is very much in theory. First of all, well, the PS4 as it stands is pretty hot and noisy. The Neo processor uses 14 nanometer or 16 nanometer production technology, but that chip is still going to be quite large. After all, we are looking at a 2.3x boost minimum in GPU power over PS4. Making a large chip run faster generates a lot more heat, meaning that we'd need a cooling assembly that's rather more meaty than one that can comfortably fit in a PS4 sized box. But yeah, if we're talking spec boosts, I do have to wonder whether even the 2.1 GHz CPU in Neo is fast enough. With our recent Xbox One S testing, we've been able to isolate CPU bound areas in gaming. I mean, if two Xboxes, one with a faster GPU, are hitting identical gaming bottlenecks, the CPU is the likely culprit. So check out The Witcher 3 here, identical dips beneath 30 FPS. Now here, we reckon that a 2.1 GHz Jaguar may well be enough to hit the the target frame rate. But when we see performance tank this badly in Just Cause 3, well, when we're at 16 frames per second, you do have to wonder what an extra 31% of additional CPU power can realistically achieve. But again, upclocking Jaguar CPU cores, more heat, more power consumption, that would mean a bigger box, a meteor cooler, something more along the lines of the original Xbox One. And well, I might be wrong, but I just don't see this as part of Sony's design philosophy. And there's one more issue we need to take into account, timelines. When Sony dropped its 8GB GDDR5 bombshell back in February 2013, 
there were nine more months until the PlayStation 4 shipped. Plenty of time to course correct. With Neo, well, we may even have a machine out by October. And then there was the nature of that spec boost. Sony negotiated a deal with Samsung to procure its double density memory modules. They literally swapped into the existing design to move from four gigs of RAM to eight. It was more of a logistical issue as opposed to an engineering one. So overall then, what is PlayStation Neo? Well, the spec circulating to developers, I do still think it's the real deal and it's what will be in the machine when it eventually launches. And uh, yeah, it would be a bit unfair to pull the rug away from under game makers now with a spec boost when software is being submitted as we speak. And let's be clear about what the Neo spec actually delivers. It's practically the best console box that can be delivered in 2016 when GPU power and backward compatibility is taken into account. And yeah, that back compat, that got me thinking. Let's go back to the Xbox One S GPU overclock. Project Cars here, running significantly faster on the upclocked hardware. Right now, PlayStation Neo has a base mode, which is totally compatible with legacy PS4 gaming, and according to Sony, it provides an entirely like-for-like -like experience. But what if Sony improved the base mode and allowed more GPU and CPU power for existing PS4 titles. Developers could either patch their software to take advantage of the extended feature set, or Sony could just allow the hardware to iron out all of the performance drops we see on existing PS4 hardware. I mean, Xbox One S is a fantastic proof of concept, but even in a closed box environment, extra system resources won't break the games. You'd get extra refinement, less screen tear, and a better lock on target frame rates. So that's just a thought on my behalf, but it's a compelling one and a spec boost that would be really welcome. Okay then, so we'll know all about the final Neo spec soon enough, September the 7th, and we'll be reporting back then. But in the meantime, do like and subscribe to support what we do here at Digital Foundry. I'll catch you next time.